So just hold on a bit as I start uh -huh, the recording of the session. So welcome to today's masterclass. I hope we're all excited to be here today. If you are excited, you can also show me by giving me a thumbs up or any reaction at all you might have in the... Um, if you are excited to be here, let me see your reactions. All right, so let's get straight into it. So welcome to um, it's an analytics masterclass. So welcome from any part of the world you might be joining from. You can also put it in the chat where you are coming from. All right, whether you are in Lagos, Nigeria, like me, or you are from outside Nigeria, probably in the U USA, in the UK, wherever you are from, you can put it in the chat. Oh, oh my name is this, I'm from this. All right, so let me get our reactions in the chat as well. Let me get our reactions in the chat. Hello, guys. Can we all hear me? Hello, guys. Are we not excited to be in Eternal Analytics Masterclass? Great. I have someone saying they are from Lagos, Nigeria. What's your name, though? All right. I'm seeing Taiwo from Lagos, Nigeria. I have a lot of folks from where I am. So um, don't be shy to, you know, type in where you are from and also your name so I can get to know you better as well before we go straight into what we have for today. All right, someone is from Toronto. Nice to meet you, Lydia. Nice to meet you, Lydia. Lydia from Toronto. All right, so let me just get straight into it. So today we're going to do something really exciting, something that I personally love. All right, so we'll be creating an interactive dashboard on, you know, Excel from scratch. The reason is to, you know, optimize the sales for a fashion brand, which is quite exciting. So if you are with me today, you'll be building your first dashboard on um, Excel, an interactive one at that. All right, so today after, you know, the creation of the dashboard, We'll go straight to, you know, talking about how you can have this technical and employability skills to get a job as a data analyst. And also, we'll talk about the upcoming course we have in Tenalytics. So before I go ahead, let me talk about Tenalytics a bit, all right? So you, as you already know my name, my name is Jennifer OKK. I'm your host for today. And alongside myself is I Sosa as well, who is also your host, um, is also um, a co-host for this particular masterclass. All right, so I am delighted to represent Tenalytics today in leading edutech company, all right, dedicated to providing specialized training in technological skills and also delivering comprehensive data consulting services. I'm very proud to be part of Tenalytics and I hope you'll be part of us soon, all right? Over the years, over the past four years, we have successfully built the talent for the technological workforce, helping over 2,000 students. And you can be part of these students in the long run if you join us in Tenalytics, all right? Transitioning from the classroom to their first tech jobs across different parts of the world, the UK, USA, Canada, Europe, Asia, and even Africa, all right? So wherever you are is not a limitation, you surely after going through our program, you surely land yourself that first tech job. All right. So we are also committed to making technological sector more accessible to every part or every individual possible. So we are ready to um, break down these trainings, even to someone that doesn't have any tech background or someone that doesn't even have any background in any um, tech um, um, role whatsoever. We'll be ready to break it down for you to be able to ingest and also apply these skills to the real world. So at Analytics, we offer a wide range of courses, not just in data analytics. We also offer business analysis, data engineering, data science, financial analytics, HR analytics, Scrum, um, cybersecurity, and also AI engineering. We have a range of courses that you know anybody and anybody from any part of the world can also participate and take part in. So our team of instructors are from leading global companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and even more. So we are not limited by talent. 
So we have people on ground that will take these courses and you know take it from zero to hero. So get ready. And as you join us today in our free master class, just have a taste of what we usually enjoy here in Analytics. All right, so we have a wealth of reward and you know experience to our programs, ensuring that you receive and engage, and you receive engaging practical learning experience to maximize the value of your investment in the future. All right, in your future rather. So today, let's delve into what we have for today. All right, so how many of us are excited? If you're excited to start this um, interactive dashboard with me, can I get a thumbs up or can I get reaction or can I get comments in the chat? I, I just want to see our excitement. I'm sure that most majority of us are curious to know, oh, how do you create an interactive dashboard? Don't worry, in this session today, we would be creating that, all right? We will be creating that from scratch. All right, so let's go straight into what we have for today. All right, so before I go ahead, I would like to introduce myself a bit. I only said my name, but there are some few things about me I would also want to say. So my name is Jennifer Okeke. I have years in the data, you know, data analytics field. I'm also a senior data associate present in data analytics. I am one of your instructors. If you are, um, come on board with us, you'd also see me in one of your classes as well. I have experience in the FMCG, EduTech, energy, and also agrotech industry. So I've worked across all of these industries. So I have vast experience in data analytics across these industries. I've worked as a data analyst, and I've also worked as a business intelligence analyst as well. So I'm also very versatile with you know, ranges of analytical tools like Excel, Power BI, SQL and you know Python. My expertise cut across all these tools, so you don't need to worry at all. I'm an expert by design, so I can't wait to see most of you in class. And also, I would like to introduce my colleague also on the call. His name is I Sosa. All right, he has you know over three years experience as a data professional. All right, across different you know industries like you know data analytics business analysis, even power platform development, and most recently, predictive AI engineering. He's the team lead in charge of data analytics, internalytics, and he has, you know, has a wealth of, you know, experience across different industries as well, uh, like uh, marketing and strategy, fintech, and also, uh, most recently, power platform development. Aside from that, you know, Isosa also operates as a consultant and also freelancer in his own free time. And he has trained over one five participants, you know, solidifying their expertise in the field. So if you're excited to meet Isosa like I am, I'm excited that he's on the call with me today. I'm at yeah. rest and I'm at peace he's here. So if you are excited that he's here as well, you can also give me a thumbs up or some reactions in the chat. All right, so Isosa, yeah. do you want to say hello? Of course. Uh, thank you very much for that, Jennifer. And hello, everyone. Uh, hello to you. And of course, wherever you're joining in from. So it's going to be a fantastic session. Uh, so Jennifer is going to take, um, you know, show us how we can go ahead to build a fantastic dashboard, but not just a dashboard that is a dashboard, but a dashboard that tells a story, something that you'll be able to replicate in your organization at the moment, something that when you go to work tomorrow, because it's still a weekday. All right, so tomorrow is Friday. So when you go to work tomorrow, you can try this out. You know, just take your company data, try this out. Wow, then your boss should be like, oh, so how did you how did you do this? Did you just transform, you know, just uh, <laughs> just last night? Okay, so that is what you want. All right, and please ensure that you listen in while um, Jennifer takes us through that. And I will come back later on to uh, tell us about how we can get into uh, the tech space. Jennifer, please go ahead. All right. Thank you so much, Isosa. So let me proceed. All right. So today we'll be looking at a, okay, let's get started. So if you would also have access to this material later on, all right, if you sent emails and you also have access to this material, you can also download the data from this presentation slide. All right. So let's go straight into it. So the business we are looking at today is called Dell Weird Clothing Co. Dell wears clothing co and it's focused um you know well our focus basically is to you know help them with their sales strategy you know derive you know insights to you know through their data so we want to analyze their customer demographics their purchase behavior 
and you know how the company aims to optimize its marketing efforts and improve customer satisfaction. So how do we intend to do this? We'll be doing that by looking at a few questions, all right, a few questions that have already been crafted for us for, for it to serve as a guide today. So let's, you know, go straight into this. Okay, yes, this is how the dashboard will look at the end of the day. So let's see how we can, you know, do this particular dashboard on Excel. All right, so now let me open up my Excel file. So I'll talk about the data a bit before we proceed. It's very important and very essential that we understand the data we want to work on before we do anything at all. All right, so first of all, we have the customer ID. We have the age of the customer. We also have the agenda and also the item that each of these customers might have purchased. All right, we also have the category of these items purchased and also the purchase amount. So this is the exact amount the part this particular you know, customer bought this item they, um, they um, purchased. And also where is the person from, the location of this particular you know, um, um, customer, all right? It's probably the size of the item they bought, the color, and also at what season was this particular item you know, purchased? All right, the review rating from the customer, was it a good one or was it just, you know, meh, just there, all right? And also the um, subscription status, all right? The, the person still subscribed to their wills, the person still buying from us. So it's either a yes or a no, all right? We would also look at, would also look at the shipping type. How was this particular item delivered to the customer? Then also, was the discount applied? Yes or no? Was a promotion code used? Yes or no? Um, were there previous purchases of this particular item? So we would know by how many. Were there like 14 purchases before now? Two? It's just a number of how many purchases before this particular time. All right. Payment method. How was the transaction? You know, how was the particular item paid for? And also the frequency of purchase as well. So that is the breakdown of the data. So now we understand what is in the data. Now let's answer the questions, all right? For every data analyst, you, you have to go through the step of understanding your data. That's why domain knowledge is very important anytime you want to analyze data. You need to understand the data you are trying to analyze. All right, so now let's go back to the slide quickly. All right, so the first um, question says, um, what are the key performance indicators on the dashboard? All right, so we want to build the KPIs. All right, we want to build the KPIs that surround this particular, you know, you know, dashboard we're about to build. So we'll be looking at total sales. All right, average purchase amount, customer retention rates, average review rating, number of customers. All right, so let's start with the first one, which is total sales. All right, which is total sales. So let's go to that place. So I already have my working sheet here. I already have my working sheet. So this is where we'll do all of our workings, all right, all of the workings that entails us to, you know, get that beautiful dashboard at the end of the day. So before we start, the first things first is to convert this data range into a table, all right? Convert this data range into a table. In Excel, this is not automatically a table. This is the range of, you know, data. So how do we convert this data range to a table? All you have to do, you know, is highlight every single column present in this data, all right? And every single row present. Then you go to the home tab, all right? Then you click on format as table, all right? You can pick whatever design you like at your discretion as you would want it. So I'll just be going with this one, all right? After doing that, you click OK, all right? So now, so after doing that, you have table design over here. It pops up. It's the tab that pops up where you convert this to a table. You click on it. Then you can also give your table a name. So I'll just call this Dell, you know, Wear. All right, Dell Wear. Or just call it Dell Data or something. Just give it a name, then say OK. All right, it seems the name already exists. So I'm just going to give it a different name. Just call it Dell. All right, Dell Wear or something. All right. All right, okay, that particular um, symbol we put there is not supposed to be used. So we can just call it Dell data without putting any symbol, then okay. So that fixes the problem. So now after this, the next thing for us to do is pull up a pivot table. We want to create an interactive dashboard in Excel. For it to be interactive, you have to use a pivot table. 
all right you have to use a pivot table because you've already made this a table you can click on any point all right and go to inserts when you click on insert you go to pivot table then you know you say from table stroke range all right then you can see that their data is already present i'll choose an existing worksheet because i already created that before now all right then i'll go to that existing worksheet which is working sheet all right then i pick wherever i want to drop this pivot table i probably put it in this area or this area then click ok so after that we have this for the pivot table all right so from the first question the first question says all right the first question says um total sales total sales so how do we get the total sales all right if you want to give me suggestions you can also put that in the chat all right so for total sales obviously from our data we already know that total sales is talking about the items, the total um, item, or rather the total purchase amount, all right, the total purchase amount. So in this um, pivot table field, we have different panes, all right, because the purchase amount is a numeric, you know, you know um, data, we have to put it in the values pane. That way, Power BI, or rather, Excel will be able to calculate the number of purchases or the total number of purchases that have gone through this particular business based on, you know, the data we have presently. All right, so we can see that it's about, we can't really make sense of this the way it is. So how do we fix this in a way that, you know, we can read it and be able to tell, all right, what this is what we're talking about. That's very easy. All right, all you have to do is go to insert or rather home. All right, in the home tab, you have the, these numbers here. So you just need to, you know, come to general, all right, and change it to currency. Our business is present in the United States. All right, so I'll change it to dollars and also take out the decimal places. All right, take out the decimal places. So we can presently see, we can see that this particular business in total has made up to 233,881 dollars, all right, in total um, sales. All right, so the next part of our um, data, um, our question says the average purchase amount, the average purchase amount. So how do we get that? So since this is all about our KPIs, we'll still leave it in the same pivot, all right, in the same pivot table. So all we have to do is go to, you know, purchase amount again and drag it down on that next the other one we did. So this time around, all we have to do is come to the drop down here and go to value field settings, all right, and change it to average and click OK. All right, so there we have it. We have the average purchase amount. So we can see on an average, we have about $60 of our products being sold, all right? $60 of our products being sold. So now the next thing on our list, all right, we have to go back to the question is to check the customer retention rate, all right? The customer retention rate. All right, for this particular one, it's a bit tricky. All right, it's not straightforward like this. All right, so how do we go about this? It's pretty easy. So all you have to do is, you know, copy this, Control C, and, you know, bring it down here. So you don't have to repeat the whole step of going back to the data and, you know, making, creating a pivot all over again. I, I'm, I'm a fan of shortcuts, all right? So we're doing a lot of shortcuts in this, you know, masterclass today. So how do I do it in such a way that I don't have have to go through the tedious route. I just copy and paste, all right? Then I take out all of the things I don't need, okay? Take out all of the things I don't need, then voila, we have a new pivot table over here without us having to go through that tedious route. So how do we get the retention rate? So retention rate will be gotten from the subscription status, all right? If you remember when I was talking about the data, that subscription status has to do whether with this, whether, whether this particular customer all right, it's still with us, all right? So if it's a yes, this customer is still with us. If it's a no, this customer is no longer with us. So let's just put it in the rows first of all and see how it looks. All right, so there we have it. All right, so we can also put this here. So this is to automatically give us a count, all right? It will automatically give us a count. So you are surprised that we have dollars. This is just a count of subscription status. If you recall, we copied it from here. So all of the formatting, from here will be retained in this particular portion. So how do we deal with this? All right, you go to the home tab, all right? You go to the home tab, then you know, you change it from accounting to general, all right? Or we also have to repeat the same. Let's highlight everything and do that at once. 
all right? We change it to general, all right? So we have this. So we want to get the rate. So rate has to do with percentage. How do we ensure we get the rate, all right? All you have to do is right click and say, show value as percentage of grand total. All right, voila. So now we have the percentages here. So we can see that about 27% of our customers are still with us. So this is the retention rate. So I want to take away this grand total. It's not really necessary. All right, so all I have to go to do is go to design. All right, I go to grand totals and turn it off. So then that deals away with the grand total. So, and also take out this um, decimal places. All right, so I come here and reduce the decimal places. Not necessary. All right, so now let's go to the next, you know, part, which is, you know, the average review rating. Then also we'll look at the number of customers. All right, average review ratings and numbers of customers. So we can come back here and complete it here. All right, so let's go to average review rating. So we just drag this and drop it down here. All right, drag it and drop it down here and change this to, you know, average instead of sum. All right, we change it to sum. So there we have it. Of course, it's in dollars because of the formatting. It's not supposed to be. Then we come here, all right, and change it to general. All right, we can see it has a lot of decimal places. So what's the short cost of taking out these decimal places? You use this comma sign. You click on it, then it takes away two decimal, takes it down to two decimal places. But I don't want any decimal places at all. So I'll just, you know, use this to make it just, you know, a whole number. Then lastly, number of customers, all right? was number of customers is the customer id all right so all i'll do is just drag it all the way down here all right drag it all the way down here all right then you know come to the home tab then you know correct the formatting all right from this to general all right then you know come over here to where it is and change it to count all right the reason why we're getting some is because you know, Excel recognizes that particular column as a numeric, you know, data. So we have to tell Excel that we don't want it to be summed up, we want it to be counted. All right, so we just click on count and OK. So now we have the exact number of customers, you know, that have purchased from this business so far. All right, that has purchased from this business so far. So let it not be like I'm just talking. So are we all enjoying what we're going, what we're doing right now? I know it doesn't make sense yet. Because, you know, I'm just doing pie for tables and all of that. So let me proceed to the next step. All right. I believe you can all hear me. If you can hear me, just put it in the chat. You can hear me. I'm following. Don't worry, you'll be found. Whoever is lost will be found. Just stick with me to the end, all right? So we're just answering questions from the slide and, you know, using Pivot Table to answer those questions. So very soon, we'll be plotting charts and all of that. Thank you. Thank you for following. All right. So let's proceed, all right? So we have all our cards here. No, so the next thing is to go and answer the remaining questions that, we you know, give us charts. All right, so now let's go to the next question. Um, the next question says, what are the top performing categories? What are the top performing product categories? All right, to answer this particular question is pretty straightforward. So I don't need to go to my table and start you know, creating a five-hour table again. All I have to do is Control C, then Control V. All right, Control C, then Control V, then take out all the things I don't need. All right, take out all the things I don't need. So since you want to know the best performing category, it's very easy. So we come to category, all right, we drag it in columns. Then we take also purchase amount, all right? It will make sense if you look at it based on purchase amount, which particular category is cashing out the most, all right? Which particularly particular category is cashing out the most? So as you already know, because of, you know, we copied this, it will retain the formatting and all of that. So how do we deal with it? We go to home. All right, we change it from percentage to general. Then we know we use this um, comma sign, then also come to currency here. All right, change it to dollars. And also take out the decimal places. 
So we can clearly see that a particular category is sticking out, and which is clothing. So that means most people buy clothing, all right? Most people buy clothing. So I need to arrange it in such a manner whereby I don't have to strain my eyes to start picking which is worst and which is best. I can just right click, all right, and go to sort. I'll sort by smallest to largest. So that way I'll be able to, oh, understand that, oh, yeah. We can see that the outer wears, you know, are the least in terms of purchase amount and the best is clothing. All right, so that solves this particular question, which is very easy. So now let's put a chart around this. So to put a chart, you can click on any point, all right, then go to insert, then, you know, click on a chart, all right, and pick, are we picking this bar chart for now? All right, I'll just put it by the side because, you know, we've not started creating the dashboard yet. or just answering the questions, all right? So I'll just make it a bit smaller than this, then just drag it all the way here. So this is the chart. So clearly from this, you can distinctly and uh, distinctively tell that all right the clothing you know category is doing best and the list is the outer wears so now for me the next thing i want to do after doing this is take out these buttons so we can see these icons here they are called field buttons all right so i can take them out by right clicking then saying um hide all field buttons all right so that takes it out so we can have a more clearer visual all right so let's go ahead to answer the next question so the next question says what are the top 10 customer purchases what are the top 10 customer purchases all right what are the top 10 customer purchases as usual we can start by copying this all right and coming all the way down here all right coming all the way down here all right then, you know, unticking all the unnecessary things and, you know, putting what we need. So the first thing we need is item purchase, all right? So let's take item purchase to this particular area. Then take, you know, purchase item, all right, amount to this place, all right? So in that way, we have all of the items that I've ever purchased over time. So I just want to get the top 10. All of these don't concern me. So to get top 10 in pivot, in pivot tables, all you have to do is click on this drop down over here. All right, after clicking on it, you go to, you know, value filter. All right, under value filter, you go to top 10. All right, then you pick top 10 based on the sum of purchase amount. Then you click OK. So now we just have the top 10. So the next thing for us to do is, you know, arrange it in order of, of lowest to highest or from highest to lowest. All right, so I'll arrange it in order. So sort from largest to smallest. So we can clearly see that blouse is doing the best and the list are short. All right. So after this, you already know what we do is to insert a visual. All right. So just if you use the recommended chart, it will already give us something. So let's just use recommended chart. We'll use this instead and click OK. So this is a very good recommendation from Excel. So this actually depicts our insights clearly. All right, so next thing is to take out field buttons. All right, hide all field buttons. All right, so now let's go to the next question. Before we do, let's copy this pivot chart again, or the table rather, and paste it directly under. All right, paste it directly under. Okay, so what's the question? The question says, what are the average review rating by product category what are the average review rating by product category so basically you want to know how each category is doing in terms of rating so which category is rated the best which category is rated the least so how do we do that so first of all just take out what we don't need all right then drag category to rows all right then go all the way down to find review rating and drag it to values all right so of course we will have this then what we have to do is come to the drop down, go to value field settings, then change it to average and click OK. So that way we have this 444. Of course, I don't want to see this in dollars because it's not money, it's ratings. All right. We come down to accounting and change it to general. All right. Then, of course, we have it in so many decimal places Then we can just use this comma sign as a shortcut to get it in two decimal places. All right. So we have this. All right, I would prefer to leave it in two decimal places because as you can see that majority of them are three point something, three point something. So just to get a bit of the highest, we can just do right click, then go to sort, then choose, you know, largest to smallest. 
So this basically our ranges. So we can see that the footwear, in terms of ratings, is rated highly than that of clothing. And ironically, clothing, clothing is doing the best in terms of, you know, money, in terms of purchase amount. So that means they might be doing something right with their footwear, but, you know, they are clothing. They are not still rating them well, probably because it's cheaper. You know, people tend to go for the clothing more. All right. So probably the company needs to look into it and see what they can do about that. All right. So now let's put a visual around this. So we can go to insert then use recommended charts. All right. So to make the work faster. Okay. I really like this recommendation. I'll go with it. All right. Then drag it all the way here. Then you can, you can reduce the size. All right. So take out the field buttons as usual. All right. That's that. So now let's copy this to answer another question. Control C, then, you know, control V. All right. So now let's go to the next question. The next question says, how do sales vary by season? How do sales vary by season? And of course, yeah, sales will vary by season because, you know, people tend to buy some type of wares than others in different seasons of the world. If you are just in Nigeria, we have only two seasons. We have dry weather and, you know, rainy season. All right. So I'll just drag seasons to rows and also but for our data since they are in the united states of course they have three seasons they have the spring summer winter and also fall all right and i also drag purchase amount so we want to see how well people buy based on all these seasons as well so before we go ahead let's change this to money let's change it to currency all right dollars then take out the decimal places as well so there we have it so and also we can clearly see that anytime you're talking about, you know, time, talking about, you know, how a particular thing is doing across time, it's always best to represent that in a line chart, all right? In a line chart, all right? Anything that has to do with time analysis or time at all, it's best to represent it in a line chart. So I go to insert. So I'll be picking the line chart this time around, then, you know, this particular line chart, then bringing it all the way down here, all right? Then I'll just um, reduce the size a bit, take out the field labels, then hide field buttons. So we can clearly see that this, the weather that people buy the most are, are in the fall um, season. It's in the fall season. People tend to buy more stuff during fall than the least during summer. So that means this particular organization might not be selling summer-friendly wares. So this is something they need to look into all right see the data is speaking to us and we're getting some insight it's making sense i believe that so if it's making sense to us you can also leave something in the chat for me to see that yeah with this uh, with this pivot we're already getting some insights already without even building the dashboard yet which is quite interesting all right it is quite interesting so let me go ahead to the last question finally the last question says which customer demographics are driving the most sales which customer demographics are driving the most sales? So we want to see based on male and female, all right, which of our um which of the genders are giving us the best in sales. All right. So we don't need to take out the purchase amount, we can just take out the seasons, all right, and you know, drag the custom the gender to rows. So we can clearly see that ah, the males are buying the most from us. All right, the males are buying the most from us. That means this particular, you know, organization might be making we are tilting to the male gender. All right, that's why may, probably there's a correlation between that and summer wears. All right, a correlation between that and summer wear because ladies like to, you know, wear sundresses and all of that. They might not be having that, so that's why they are not getting much sales in the summertime. All right, they're not getting much sales in the summertime. All right, so now let's visualize this. So, right. so I would always suggest that anytime you're having something this small, you can use, all right, insert, then go to, you can use a donut chart or a, a, a pie chart, all right? A donut chart or a pie chart. You've probably seen some visualizations online or everywhere. Unlike, you know, in other places, Tenalytics will teach you how to, you know, use the appropriate visualization, you know, um, visualization to tell the appropriate story or to tell the appropriate story of your insight. All right, so in a pie chart, in a pie chart like this, or a donut chart, you're not supposed to have more than you know three slices at most. What's turned to was four, and I don't even advise four because four might seem a bit clustered. All right, you might not be getting the necessary insights you need. 
But if you're having just two or three slices, which is fine, from this, you can clearly see that, oh, the meals are doing the best. If I have more than this here, it will be confusing and, you know, very distracting. All right, so I'll just hide that. All right, I'll just hide that. Then we can see that, oh, we have this donut chart. So we are finished with our questions. All right, we've done all the technical parts. Now let's do the aesthetics part, which is building the dashboard. All right, which is building the dashboard. So the first thing I would want to do basically is copy all of these charts. We're taking it to our dashboard sheet. All right, copy it all at once. Copy, Ctrl C, go to our dashboard. So I already crafted the skeleton part of the dashboard already. The skeleton, this is the skeleton part of the dashboard. We'll be inserting in each of our charts and also our cards. So I'll just paste it here. Ctrl V. All right, it didn't copy. So let's go and copy it again. We can do Ctrl X to cut it all right so there we have it all our charts are already here so we can just leave them there while we do some other things with the cards all right so we can already see that some things are already present in the cards here so i'll be showing you how i was able to you know put them here all right so let me just leave one all right then delete the rest so for this particular one we can move it all the way here all right then we'll do something about that later but first of all let's give our dashboard a name all right, let's give our dashboard a name. So we want this dashboard to be called something. All right. So since we are working with Dell Wears, all right. So we are working with Dell Wears. So we can just come to inserts. All right. Then go to our the, in inserts. You would have text. All right. You click on text box. All right, then you draw out a text box like this. All right, draw out a text box like this. All right, so I'm just going to type in. All right. There. We are comprehensive, comprehensive sales dashboard. All right, there we are comprehensive sales dashboard. So we highlight everything and change the um the the font size and all of that. So to do that, you come to the home. All right, so there's a particular theme I have in mind. So this particular font. So I'll just change it to that particular font. Then, you know, give it uh, a particular size. Let's do 23. All right, let's do 23. So there we have it. And also I will change the color to my theme color. There's a particular theme color. So it's this particular color here, blue gray. All right, so this is the theme. So I'll just move this here because I'll be adding an icon. So we're not quite done with this yet. So we go to shape formats and make sure there are no fills. So we want this to be transparent as it is right like this. It's not transparent at all. All right. So that it just blends into the background like this. Voila. So this is what we have. So now I already have um, a sheet where I placed all my icons. All right. With all my icons already. But if you want to get icons, it's pretty easy. You can come to insert, go to illustration. Then you see icons. When you click on it, you have variety of icons you can also use in your dashboard later on all right so i already chose this beforehand so i'll just take this and cut it and bring it to my dashboard and paste it here all right then you know drag it all the way to this particular aspect and you can see that our dashboard is already coming together all right so we have this so now the next thing for us to do is you know handle our you know kpis all right before we do that i want to duplicate this to duplicate anything you can just do Control g all right Control do duplicate anything. So first of all, is the title of my. So I'll just take this out. All right. First of all, is the title of my chart, the first card. So the first card is the total sales, obviously. 
all right total sales it's too big like this i want to make it smaller so something around 12 all right something around 12 then drag it to the side like this all right drag it to the side like this all right so now i also want to change the color to probably gray we don't want everything to be blue 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 and all of that so i'll put it to this particular color all right so instead of me to replicate this again i'll just duplicate all right duplicate and bring it to this place all right i duplicate again duplicate again duplicate again all right it's like excel as i did master the positioning of my duplicates all right so that way it can easily just do that all right that way it can easily just do that all right so let me come to this particular aspect and change it to the next one which is average sales so the next one is average sales all right so now the second the third one is average retention or rather average review rating average review rating all right so i don't want anything to be going all the way so i can just extend this all right then move this a bit all right so now the next one is retention Retention rates. Then finally, the last one, number of customers. Number of customers. All right, so we can just leave that here. So now let's go ahead to put the figures. So you are probably wondering at this point, how do we put the figures? How do we make this interactive? Don't be alarmed. I'm about to show you that. All right, so for this particular, if you notice that it has equals to working sheets. So this is the reason why it is interactive because we are referencing from where this information is in our working sheets. So for the total sales, you can come to our working sheets. If you recall that, total sales is the sum of purchase amount. So we just highlight that and enter. Then automatically it gives us the numbers, all right? Automatically it gives us the numbers. So now let's also duplicate this, duplicate and just drag it here, all right? Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. So you can see that Excel will automatically just master where it's supposed to duplicate it to. So now let's take out this one, all right? Then also repeat the same thing, equal to, go back to working sheets, then highlight this, enter, all right? Same thing for this, come to the formula bar, equal to, all right? Um, go to working sheets, then, you know, go to average rating, review rating, all right? Then also for the retention rates, all right, equal to retention rate, as we explained earlier, is the amount of customers that are subscribing to our service. And you can see that that is about 27%. So enter. Then lastly, number of customers, all right, equal to, then go back to our working sheet, all right, then take that and enter. So, all right, so all we have to do is highlight everything. All right, highlight everything. Let's just change the format all together at once without having to do it one by one. All right, go to the home tab. Let's change it to the theme um, font we are using. All right, then probably increase this to about 16. All right, and change the color to our theme color. All right, so our theme color. All right, so everything looks good like this. All right, we can make it bolder so it can stand out. So it can be clear that, oh, these are our cards. All right. So everything is actually coming together pretty well. All right. So the next thing are the icons that will be by the side of all of these cards. So I already have that in my extra sheet. All right. In my extra sheet. So I can just copy everything and bring it to my dashboard sheet. Control X. All right. I'm cutting it from there. Then, you know, paste it. Then I can move it. Or control V, then I can move it because it's white. All right, using this here to move it to where it, we can clearly see it. All right, so now let's take it one by one. So I'm leaving this for the total sales, using this for the average sales. I'll be using this for the ratings. All right, I'll be also using this for the retention rates. And also using this for the number of customers. All right. So now everything is 
coming together pretty nicely. I'm really liking our dashboard already. Is it looking nice, guys? Are we are we looking? Are we uh, are we liking what we're seeing? It's not yet together, but it's coming together pretty nicely. What do we think, guys? What do we think? I need our responses. Let's see, let let me hear from you. What are you, what do you guys think? Well, we'll soon be done. Exactly, it's looking nice already. All right, so we're coming together nicely. Okay, so now let's 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 insert our charts. All right, so let's start with the first one. Let's start with the first one. So we'll take this one. So we don't want to have this here. So we'll just drag it and put it here for now. All right, we'll do some you know formatting to it later on. Then we'll take the next one and just put it down here. For now, we can just expand it a bit because there's space. All right, so let's go straight down. Let's drag, let's go down to take the other ones. All right, so we can just, you know, highlight everything and cut it. All right, so we don't have to start scrolling down again. So we can just paste it around here. All right, it's already up front. So we can bring this one here. All right, then take this line one down here. Then, you know, carry this one to this place. So we're not quite done. Everything is typically modeled up and all of that. But we'll come back to that, okay? We'll come back to that, guys. We would come back to that. So let's do something about slicers, first of all, before we finish up the design for this. I want us to see something really quickly based on the slicers, all right? So that you can, we can see the interactivity of our dashboard, all right? We can see the interactivity of our dashboard before I make it, you know, blending and everything looks all nice, all right? All right, so now for the slicers, we go back to our working sheet. All right, to create a slicer in Power, in Excel, rather, you come to the working sheet. All right, choose any of the pivot. All right, choose any, it can be anyone. Then come to pivot analyze. All right, then say insert slicer, click on it. All right, so I would want to see a slicer based on, you know, the sub subscription status and also the shipping type. I would also want to see a slicer based on if there is a discount and also if there are promotions, all right? Then, okay. All right, so we can see all of these slicers here. All right, we can see all of the slicers here. But I want it to also fit into our team. So I can highlight all the slicers and just come to slicer. All right, then pick a particular theme. So I pre-designed I pre -designed this before the class. All right, I pre-designed pre this particular slicer before the class. So if there's time, I can also show you how to pre-design yours like that but for now we'll just pick this all right and control x all right or you join our training program and see how that particular part is done all right in analytics we are very detailed we take you from nitty gritty you come from zero to hero all right you grow from zero to hero so all right so now i've um cut that so i'll just paste it all right so i'll just drag this all right drag this drag this over here all right, so it blends in very well to that place. All right, drag this over here. All right, drag this over here. And lastly, the last slicer, drag it over here. So as it is right now, it's not really interactive. All right, so if I click on something, it might not really do any change or just to that particular um, column that it might be affecting. So how do I ensure it becomes interactive? Whereby if I click anything, the whole of the chat starts to change. All right, there's something called report connection. So I click on the first slicer, then go to slicer, then go to report connections. All right, I begin to click, tick all of the slicers we ever created since we began this uh, master class. All right, click on it and OK. All right, repeat the same thing for the next slicer. All right, report connection, click on it. All right, click on it, click on it, click on it. All right, and OK. Then the next slicer. All right. All right, go to slicers. All right, go to report connection. Click on it, click on it, click on this, click on this, click on this, and that's that, and OK. Then lastly, the last slicer, click on it, go to Report um connections, click on this, click on this, go all the way down, click on it, click on this, 
all of the pivots have to be clicked so that you know everything can be interactive. All right, then okay. All right, so let's test out what we just did just now. All right, let's test out what we just did just now. All right, so we just click on yes. So we click on yes, you see everything changes. There's an interaction even with the figures we have in our cards. All right, in our cards. So we just exit that. So let's look at shipping type. Okay, two day shipping. All right, see everything changes. Express, let's click on express. You see something changes. Free shipping, everything changes. So we can just exit that. All right, so another thing we want to do is just the name. You can see the subscription is not fully showing. So how do I edit the names? All right, come to slicer. All right. Then take out sub, description, just leave it as sub. All right, I believe anybody that sees it would understand. All right, the subscription, then shipping type, you cannot change it to ship type. All right, then discount, you can just leave it as a question. Did the person apply discount? So you cannot say discount. All right, then this other one, slicer. All right. Was the promo code applied? So there we have it. Or we cannot say promo. All right, enter. So, and everything, you can clearly see the names of our slicers. All right. So, we're not done. So, but how is it looking, guys? I'm still going to do something. I'm still going to do something. We still have a few more minutes. All right. We'll quickly finish this up. But let me get your comments. Can we see how beautiful our interactive dashboard is coming? All right. If you want to create something like this on your end, you have the recordings. And also, you can also sign up to the analytics program. All right. You can sign up to the analytics program. All right, you get the privilege to, you know, learn all of these things. I know at your fingertips, you have facilitators, awesome facilitators, and also beautiful materials that will help you, you know, go from zero to hero. All right, so let me come back to this particular chart. So let's make this chart blending or look like all of our cards here. So very easy. All right, first things first, I click on this icon that looks like a plus. All right, take out the grid lines, take out the legends. I don't need legends. And also, lastly, you'll be wondering, I'll also take out the horizontal axis. I don't want it there. Then I'll just click data labels instead. All right. So the data, one thing about the data labels, I want the positioning to be inside end. All right. Inside end. All right. So I'll just click on this to change the size. I want it to be a bit bigger than that. So around 12. And also I want it to be white. All right. And also the theme of our dashboard. Of course, it's a bit bigger than that. So maybe I'll change it to 10. All right. So on this particular one, I'll also change it to our team fonts. All right, make it bigger than that, around 10. All right, and give this particular chart a name. All right, so I'll call it category. By purchase. Amount. All right, I'll highlight everything now to change it to our theme fonts. All right, I want it to be around 11. And also, I want it to be white. And also, the fill should be our theme fill. All right, and I'll move it to the side like this. All right, I'll move it to the side. And also, the bars, the color of our bars, I want it to be, once I click on the bar, automatically this pops. So, so we can see fill here. So in fill, we can change it to the theme, you know, color. And also, we could also increase the width of our fill, the gaps in between. All right. You can make it a bit bigger than that, smaller, depending on what you want. So I want it to be a bit bigger. All right. All right. This is perfect. Okay. So now, and lastly, also the shape around the visual. Of course, I wouldn't want there to be any fill. And also no outlines. I want it to be visible, kind of. All right, transparent, more like a hair. So we can see it blending rightly with the envir environment. So let's do the same for the pie chart. All right, let's do the same for the pie chart. Let's take the title of the chart over here. I'll change it to um, sales by customer gender. Sales by customer gender. I'll highlight everything. Go to insert, or rather home, change it to our theme fonts, all right? 
Then also apply the fill that we want, which is the theme color. And also we want it to be white, all right? And also the size should be 11. All right, so I'll drag this here. I'll drag this here. And also I want to make this bigger bits, of course, it has to be bigger. Then take this here, take it to the side like this. Okay, exactly. So now, of course, the colors of the slices. So let's start with the bigger one. All right, I want it to be in the theme color. Then also so the smaller one, I want it to be somewhat, somewhat ash. Yes, so it's to show that, oh, that's for the male as well. For this particular uh, male and female, of course, change it to the theme font and also make it a bit bigger than that so you can clearly see that, oh, this is the division. All right, and also something about our our slices. Okay, I want the hole to be a bit bigger than that. And also, I want there to be some labelings. Okay, okay, data labelings. All right. Of course, it will give us the non the money. I don't want the money. So how do I change it to percentages over here? So I'll change it to percentage instead of value. All right. Then do something about the size and the font as well. The level. Okay, make it white. And voila, we have this. Everything is coming, coming together. All right. And also, let's do something about the surroundings. All right. No fill. And also, no outline. All right. So now, let's go. Okay. Let's do that for this. No fill. No outline. All right, so let's complete this for this, the third dashboard. So how are we looking at, how's the dashboard coming, guys? All right, so how's the dashboard coming? Sorry, I'm a bit fast, all right? Don't worry, you have privilege to go through the recordings and you also have the material so you can follow what I'm doing step by step in your free time. All right, in your free time. So this is just a tip of the iceberg at what we do at Analytics. This is just a foretaste, all right? All right, you get the full taste of the program when you sign up and join us, okay? So now let's go to the third um, visual. All right, we're almost done, guys. Our dashboard is coming together nicely. I'm excited, all right? So let's go to the third one. First of all, let's give it a team, the title of the chart, first of all. So we call this best rated category all right best rated category all right best rated category so I'll highlight everything all right give this this and also change the background to be this blue all right and also the theme fonts let's let's always remember the theme fonts okay and to be around the size of 11 all right then we can move it to the side as we as we move others All right, and yes, we just have to take away the grid lines and also the uh, legend as well, and also change the color of the bars to be this blue. And also we can make the bars, um, you know, increase the width of the bars a bit. And also we can come here and here, we can come here to change the, the um, the theme of the. I'll make, I'll make it bigger than this. All right, same thing applies to this other one. All right, we can make it bigger. All right, we don't want to make it bigger. Let's make it leave it at nine. All right, great. So this is coming, coming together nicely. So lastly, and also this few, no fill and no outline as well. So, so now let's go ahead to do the last two dashboards um, or the last two visuals. All right. All right. Last two visuals. I know, I know we're all loving this dashboard. This dashboard is actually very nice. It's coming out together. It's coming great. So let's do this last two. Thank you for staying to this, to this time. Honestly, it means a lot. 
All right, thank you for staying to this time. Let's see what, what happens at the end of this class. So top 10 purchase. Purchase items. All right. Flav, let's do this. Let me give this one a name before we go ahead to do the others. Okay, we'll call this seasonal trend. Seasonal trend of sales. All right. Seasonal trend of sales. So let's come back to this particular one. All right. We go to home. All right and change this to this particular display to 11 all right the field should be this field then also let's not forget this as well so so we drag this all the way here then you know we work on this particular you know visual of course we take out the grid lines and also the legend so now that has been taken now everything is coming together nicely we we'll change this to this blue, then wow. Of course, we want might want to increase the width a bit or just reduce it. Okay, that's okay. Then also, lastly, we want to make this invisible, come to format or rather transparent. All right, no fill and also no outline. Then lastly, this particular dash, this particular visual. All right, this particular visual. All right, so for this visualization, I'll make it an area chart. So probably you've been working and you, you, you just thought, oh, this particular chart, I, I don't really like this chart. This is not the chart I wanted, all right? So you can change it, all right? Under design, you can say change chart type. So we just go to, you know, area, then click on area, then say, okay. All right, so we have area charts. We come over here and change the color. All right, so we probably want a different color for the area. We choose this color. Of course, we just have to take out grid lines and all of that as well. All right, change this to Sorry about that. Come to home. All right. We change this to the theme. All right. Then also this particular one. All right. We change it to the theme. As well. Then also, lastly, the title of the chat, select all, all right, then come to this particular area. All right, then, you know, of course, the size as well to 11. All right, then move it to the side. All right, so lastly, we're almost done. We're actually all already done. Go to format. All right, we say no fill and no outline. So voila, our dashboard is complete, guys. So can we see this, our dashboard? How is it looking, guys? So this is the final result of our interactive dashboard in Excel. So just to check that our interactivity is still intact. All right, so we can come to sub status and click on yes. All right, to show that, oh, yes, it's interactive. With all our edits, of course, it's still interactive. Then also for ship type, you can go to two day shipping, express shipping, and also free shipping and all of that. Day, um, next day, uh, you know, standard, store pickup, and all of that. So everything is still intact. All right, so guys, what do we think? What do we think? All right, I need our reactions. I need our reactions.
amazing work. Of course, it's beautiful. So this is just a tip of the iceberg at what we do at Analytics. So you can create this very dashboard and even better, all right, with us, all right? You can create this dashboard or even better with us, all right? All right? All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jennifer. So fantastic, amazing work, all right? I uh, for my um for me I think I have learned a lot so I at least then I got to see the way you actually um you know worked on some things and it was uh quite oh so you can actually do that like that as well and I'm sure each and every one of us in the call that we actually did um you know benefit from everything that Jennifer has mentioned so of course I know that some of us might not have been able to uh might some of us might not have been able to practice along so don't worry as long as you feel in the form that's the attendance form and of course you stay to the end of the session you are going to be getting the uh the materials the session recording so you can on your own spare time you know go out you know just work on these practice and um blow blow their heads at work all right so go to work tomorrow and you know, show them, do something amazing with the company's data, the data that you have available to you, of course. Something amazing, something mind-blowing that the manager will be like, oh, did you do this? And then if they are the manager, then the CEO will be like, oh, did you do this? And then if you are the CEO, then you would ask yourself, oh, did I do this? Okay, so, so <laughs> yeah, so, so that's it, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> all right. So thank you very much, Jennifer. Uh, you can stop sharing now, so I just uh, right. I share my screen. All right, I'll stop sharing now. All right, great. So, oh, there's something that I've been thinking about, okay? There's something that I was, uh, you know, it just came to my mind. While we were still in the call, listening to Jennifer, of course, um, dishing out the Excel wisdom, and I was learning how to build the dashboard, the report with Excel. There's something that I was thinking about, something that came to mind, something I... You know, I thought, and I would like to get your your insights. And when I say your insights, I mean each and every person on the call, talking about uh, Giovanni, talking about Emma, talking about Enoch, talking about uh, Akim, Ibukun, uh, iPhone, Isaac, all right, Jay, all right, talking about Dami, you know, everyone on the call. I would like to get your input on something. Okay, I would, I would, I like to get the your the input, your input on something. And what's that? What do we think is the ideal job? The features of an ideal of the ideal job. Also, when you say, oh, this is the ideal job for me, like a role, what are the features? I'm not asking about, oh, what is the, um, what do you think? Like, oh, what is it, you know, if you're a medical doctor or if you're a data engineer, a data analyst, that's not what I'm talking about now. But what are the features that you think make up an ideal role? All right, I do. What are the features that you think would make an ideal role? So come on, guys. We need to utilize the chat box. This is going to be very, very interactive. So we are going to have an interaction, all right? So what do we think would make an ideal role? Like this role, oh, wow, this is the best. This is the best. Like when you, like for you, when you're walking, it doesn't feel, feel like you're walking. It seems you're just living the life. What do you think would make, would, you know, what features do you think would make up that job role? What do we think? So is it, uh, you know, working remotely or is it on site? Is it, uh, you know, IP? Is it, um, you know, a uh, good work-life balance? Or is it the fact that um, you can, you know, call your your uh, manager by the first name? Okay. So, yeah, I think that's, that's probably still uh, an ideal role. Okay. So what do we think? I would like to get our responses before we move on. So, uh, Chino Som says, working from home. Okay, Chinasum says working from home. Miriam says an ideal job should leave you satisfied, not just satisfied, fulfilled. Okay, not just fulfilled. She's not done. She said an ideal job should also be dynamic and cater to your needs and wants. So you, your needs, shelter, shelter, shelter. Um, so what are the needs? What are the basic needs now? Uh, that's shelter. Um, clothing and food. Yeah, so shelter, clothing and food. So a good job should be able to get it for your needs and also your wants. So you want to buy a Porsche, all right? So you want to buy a Porsche or you, maybe you want to uh, get a new house. So a new job should be, the ideal world should be able to do that, right? Uh, Deborah says, good work balance. iPhone says, one unique feature, it's, it should pay, 
six figures, six figure salary. You know, that is what you call the, uh, that is what you call what? The ideal role, a six figure salary. A unique feature, <laughs> right? Uh, Gideon says, ideal role should bring an expected result. So you know what you're getting and you get what you knew you would get. Expected result. The boss is good pay. <laughs> uh, Victor says remote and it should be, you know, uh, you should have high satisfaction. So it should be remote and you should be satisfied when you are, when you're working. You should not, oh, so wow, it's, you should not dread Mondays. All uh, right, you should not dread Mondays. Okay, and of course we have we have some other things that um you know we 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 think. For me, I feel an ideal role. Everything we've said, you know, absolutely spot on. But some of the things I will pick on is number one, don't dread Mondays. You know, so we dread Mondays. So many persons dread Mondays. Oh, it's Monday again. Oh, so we have to go to work and all of that. <laughs> okay, then of course you need to make good money. You need to make cool cash. The Benjamins now, as some persons call it. Okay, you are, what's another thing? You want to ensure that you are working, you know, working remotely. That is still a plus. I can't remember the last time I went to the office now. Yeah, I can't. Okay, so that's still a plus. All of those things we've talked about, all of these things we've mentioned, they can't be found in, uh, they can't be found in the role of a data analyst. Okay, they can be found in the role of a data analyst. A data analyst can have each and every one of those features that we've talked about. And that's something we are going to take a look at. But first, why choose a career in data analytics? Why? Okay, why choose a career in data analytics? We already know that, uh, you know, some of us are probably thinking, oh, so yeah, you talked about the fact that uh, data analytics, I can work remotely, I can do this, I can do that. But but why should I really choose a career in data analytics? Because if you say fire is good, does it really mean it's good? If you tell me to jump into a pit now, would I jump into the pit? Why really? What, what's the big deal about data analytics? Data analytics is not the only high paying job out there. Okay, I'm currently a medical doctor. Why should I become a data analyst? Oh, I'm a lawyer. Why should I become a data analyst? Oh, I'm an engineer. Why should I become a data analyst? Why? Oh, I'm a fashion designer. Why should I become a da data analyst? Why should you become a data analyst? All right, why should you choose data analytics? Simple, one major reason. And I'm not the one saying this. The World Economic Forum, they are the ones talking about this. They are the ones talking about this. And what is that? Data analytics is one of the roles that is currently the hot cake of the current century, and it's only going to grow with the coming years. Hot cake is quotes now, of course. All right. So data analytics is that is that role that that you know that there's not going to be a time at least not anytime soon, that you're not going to become obsolete. Because one thing that we've noticed with the changing job times, now we have AI in everything. AI here, AI there, AI everywhere. That's artificial intelligence, of course. Over now, WhatsApp has um, AI. Okay, and then we are like, oh, but AI is going to come and take my, jo my job, you know, so maybe in the next couple of years, the company is going to come in and now start using AI for its work, uh, for its uh, operations. And then I'm not, I'm now going to be obsolete and then I'm out of a role. Not for data analytics. As the World Economic Forum printed out. But you might be saying, oh, I said, what are you saying? Are you trying to tell me that AI cannot do the role of a data and uh, will carry out what a data analyst can do? There's this phrase or a sentence. Okay, it's it's more of a sentence. And it's something I usually like saying. It's something I like repeating to people over and over again. When I'm asked, oh, I should say, I'm scared. I feel AI is going to make me obsolete in the next um, you know, couple of months. My company is looking to incorporate this entire new system and I feel it's going to kick me out of a job. What is the sentence? 
AI is not coming to replace jobs. Rather, those that can use AI, those are the ones that are going to be replacing those that can't. All right. So you can use AI. You can't use AI. You know that. Anyways, let's that's let's not let's not go to deep. Okay. So we we take a look at that now. What I just mentioned. Remember that. Okay. Remember what I just said. That those that can use AI will replace those that can't. Because I'm going to make reference to this down the line. Okay. I'm going to make reference to this. But that being said, so this is what. Why you should choose a career in data analytics in addition to all of the all of the um all of the things that we mentioned all of the features we mentioned as to what is the ideal role all of that is in data analytics and also the world economic forum is backing this up that as a data analyst you are sure of getting a job because by the left you see you have roles that are going that are only going to increase and increase with time in the number of opportunities available for those that have the skills. All right. But again, Aisha, sir, what you're just saying, you know, you're just spitting fables. You're just fairy tale. That's what you're just saying now. Because yeah, data analytics is good. Yes, I know that um, you know, if I get a role, you know, it's high pain, I enjoy good work-life balance, you know, I work remotely. I know it's good. But how possible is it? Because it's just like you're saying that, oh, um, you know, for you to be an astronaut, oh, I want to be an astronaut. And then how many astronauts do we really have? Or you say something like, oh, I want to be, um, uh, I want to be a president. How easy is it to be a president? Okay. So, oh, I want to go into this career path. How easy is it for me to make that transition? Because it's one thing for you to say something is good. And it's another thing for me to get, for you to get what is good. Because the fact that it's good, many persons would be trying to get that. And you might feel that, oh, the industry is now populated because everyone is going to, oh, data analytics, data analytics, data analytics. That is not the case. All right? That is not the case. And don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for it. Because after all, I'm going to talk about good things about data analytics. I'm going to talk about good things about the entire data industry because I'm a data expert. But don't take my word for it. Listen to the 2,000 plus individuals that we've been able to help transition from the classroom into their first role in tech. 2,000 plus individuals. And we have some, we have some, I have some on, on, the, on, on the slides at the moment. So we have Stephen, for instance. Stephen got a role as a data analyst in the UK after going through the data analytics program, Yacht Analytics. And just recently, he also got another data analyst role in um, this in then Glasgow in Scotland. One person, two roles. So there's nothing you can tell me that. Oh, so like it's it's not it's not possible. We have there, you know, there are a lot. So we have Anwaitin, we have Zainab, we have Bennett. So you can go through all of these when you do um get the slides, okay? And then moving on, you, we also have you know a lot of testimonials. Like I said, two thousand plus individuals that we've helped to transition from the classroom into their first job in tech. And what that means is that they did not have any prior experience, any prior knowledge about the tech industry, about oh what data analytics is all about, and all of that. That's what we mean by from the classroom into their first role in tech. All right. So you can go through all of those success um, stories, all of these testimonials when, of course, when you get uh, access to the slides. So we have Muidin, of course, who um, also got to um, uh, who also got to work as a data analyst. So he got a job with BBX in the UK and is currently in Nigeria. So he's working for a company in the UK while in Nigeria. All right. So spending in, um, being paid in pounds, spending an error. I don't think it gets better than that. Okay, but yeah, so you can listen to Muidin, you know, at the street, just, just click on that and then you get to listen to him. And we also have Ikmat that was able to transition after not being, um, uh, after not working for a while, she was able to fully transition into tech and got a job with the NHS as, as a data analyst in the UK. All right. And we also have some of the sessions that we've called, you know, some of the participants to come and speak, to tell us about how they're able to get this done, how analytics helped them to get a job in tech after training with us, of course. All right, so we have the sessions over here. So you can just, as um, soon as you get the slides, just go ahead and just click on these, just listen to those guys. Like I said, don't take my word for it. 
listen to others that have that have previously been in your shoes that had the that had the doubts that you might be having at this point in time. Do we believe that data analyst um that a data analyst has all of those things that we mentioned earlier, based on the things I just mentioned now? All right, based on that, you know, I've been talking for a while. Do we really think that it's possible to be a data analyst? And do we think that as a data analyst, I would be able to, uh, I would be able to have good work-life balance, fantastic pay, you know, all of those things we mentioned earlier. Do we think that's the case? So come on, guys. I want to see our responses, our responses on the chat box. Like I said, it's going to be very, very interactive. I speak, you speak. That's what communication is all about. Not I'm speaking and then you're, you're I don't you're not responding. Okay. So what do we think? Do we think data analytics is something that we want to take a look at? All right. So do we think that's the case? So Charles, what do you think? All right. Enoch, what do you think? Evelyn, George, Akim, King, Lucy. All right. Mohammed, what do you think? Musa, what do you think? Do you think data analytics is, you know, something you want to take a look at? Something that, um, that role that you feel from, you know, from the explanation I've just given, that role that you feel would contain each and every one of the features that I, uh, that I uh, have mentioned or that we mentioned, of course. So no response. So we don't think that's the case. So it's either a yes or a no. If you don't think that's the case, you can also send a no to the chat box as well. Okay, but we need responses. I need responses to know that, you know, we actually, that you're listening and that we are communicating. Like I said, communication is a two-way thing. So what do we think, guys? All right, so a yes or a no we do. A yes or a no we do. So a yes means that you agree with me and a no means that, uh, uh, nah, I don't think that you're, you're right, I should say. Okay, so Chino Stone is asking a question, which is more lucrative, but uh, we're going to take um questions. I'm going to take questions at the end of the session, okay? So Chino Stone, just a wait up. But Chino Stone, what do you think? Based on, you know, everything I've been talking about so far, all right, do you think data um, analytics, you know, you'll be able to get some of those features, some of, uh, you know, working remotely, ending well? Do you think that it's possible with uh, data analytics? So Chinosome says it's possible with data analytics. Great. Fantastic. So Chinosome, please, at the end of the session, all right, please reach out to me. All right. So just remind me at the end of the session, just tell me that, that I have something special for you. All right. So I have something special for you, Chinosome. At the end of the session, please just ensure you remind me. All right. That's for responding, of course. Okay. So great. So Chinosome, I have something for you. All right. So let's go ahead. Who is a data analyst? Who is a data analyst? Because we've talked about how lucrative data analytics is, why you can succeed in um, as a data analyst. But really, who is a data analyst? What is data analytics all about? All right. So data analytics is um uh, data analytics is all about analyzing data. A data analyst is responsible for analyzing and interpreting data for organizations. So as an individual, let's say you have a store. And in your store, you you always make, oh, so in your business, you always make, make 20 million, 20 million, 20 million. You know, that's what you make year, to, you know, year, year in, year out, year in, year out. And then the first, um, a year comes by and then you make 40 million times two, that's in terms of profits, times two of what you usually make. You would be curious as to what actually happened. Why was I able to get this increase in sales? Why was I able to get this increase in profits? You would want to know. That is where data comes in. A data analysis is that person in the organization that helps the organization to make what we call data-driven decisions. A data analyst is focused on how, why things happened. Oh, so uh, of, uh, a data analysis is focused on two things, okay? The first is what happened, which is, oh, what really happened? Oh, we made 40 billion. And then why did it happen? Why did we make 40 million? So we can go ahead and replicate that for subsequent years and keep on making good money. All right. So that's what it that's what a data, that's what data analytics is all about. That's who a data analyst is. And we got to get a glimpse of what data analytics is all about, you know, taking a look at the dashboard that we built earlier. So that dashboard is a dashboard that tells a story. That dashboard is a dashboard that actually solves a problem that talks about um, the different sales of, of, of course, of the um, company that uh, we worked on, that's the, in the case study. 
data analytics is very, very exciting, trust me. Okay. Now, next we have uh, so what uh, so the when you register, all right, so yeah, at analytics in the data analytics program, all right, what you're going to be learning is um, you're going to be learning about problem solving because, of course, you can't be a data analyst if you can't solve problems. That's the old premise for you to be able to analyze data and then profit solutions that would be used to solve a problem, a business problem. So without you knowing how to solve problems, well, you are not a data analyst. Maybe you are someone that can work with Excel, but not a data analyst. You must know how to solve problems for you to be a data analyst. And you also get to learn about Excel, of course, which is the bread and butter of a data analyst. You get to learn about uh, SQL, structured query language, your Power BI, your Tableau, data storytelling, and of course, chat GPT for analytics. And Remember I talked about this at the start, um, you know, when I started speaking, I talked about the fact that those that can not use AI will be replaced by those that can. And that's why for each and every one of our programs, which we, we try to find a way to ensure that you are not just learning how to become a data analyst, for example, that's for the data analytics program, but rather you are a data analyst that can go ahead and carry out the work of a data analyst, analyze data, and you can do that using um, using AI. So you can use AI to assist you in your role, to put you above those that's just the mundane data analyst, chat GPT for analytics. And of course, you're also going to be learning about Microsoft Fabrics for analytics, okay? So this is a relatively new tool by Microsoft. Many, platform, many people don't know about Microsoft Fabrics, but Microsoft Fabrics is very, very uh, you know, exciting. It's a place that you get to collaborate with other um, um, individuals within the organization, you know, sharing data, sharing insights, and all of that. Okay, and um, the data analytics time, uh, uh, timeline, that's the program, so you're going to, uh, the program is for four months, four months. You get to learn for three months, so three months of intensive learning. And then, of course, you intern for one month. Two months of learning, one month of internship with us here at Analytics, okay? And then, um, yeah, so those th those are the things. And, of course, classes are on Saturdays and Sundays, but we'll go into, we'll go into that, um, it, you know, in due time, Okay. So, but really, what are you expecting to make as a data analyst? Because we talked about the fact that, you know, good pay for you to be able to get your wants and your needs, just as was uh, that was mentioned by Miriam. So Miriam actually did say, you know, a job that can enable you to get your needs and your wants. All right. And data analytics is actually one of them. Now, this is the average pay. So in the UK, the average pay for a data analyst is between 40 to 52 um, um Pounds in the in Canada, it's you know sixty two thousand to eighty five thousand Canadian dollars, and and the US it's eighty two to ninety four thousand dollars. Now note, this is the average pay. That means the analysts that would earn significantly above this, the analysts that would earn you know above this, and there are those that will earn slightly below this. Okay, so that is the pay. That's the average pay. All right, for a data analyst. And uh, one thing about our programs is that you also get, you know, it, it comes with a free internship. So you are going to be interning with us because it's not just enough for you to, uh, you also want to, you know, garner experience. The way the program has been structured is that for each and every one of the classes, you are going to be working on case studies, real life case studies real life problems that the facilitators, industry leaders have worked on previously. Okay, so you're going to be working on these things. It's literally going to be like, oh, so I'm in the company. There's a problem. I'm a data analyst in the company and it's the problem. And then I'm going to be solving the problem using the tools, the skills of a data analyst. That is literally the way it's going to be for each and every class. And I'm sure that that's amazing. OK, so that is uh, so you're going to be getting experience from each and every one of the classes. And then, of course, at the end of the program, you, you would also uh, get to intern with us to also add up to the experience that you've been gathering while you were going through uh, the different classes. OK, uh, yeah. So. Uh, we also uh, we also learn how to build a portfolio because it's very important. 
All right, it's very important you have a portfolio, a place on the cloud, most likely, that would contain each and every one of the projects, not just mediocre projects, but fantastic projects that you've worked on. So anytime a recruiter wants to, oh, so wants to know, do you, can you even do this? Can you show me something you've worked on? Can you show me a project you've worked on? Oh, you claim you're a data analyst. Show me proof. You have a portfolio that has all of the different amazing projects that you've worked on and that you can show to the recruiter. And of course, the recruiter will be impressed. All right, so you can just click on this to see what a portfolio looks like. Of course, when you get um the slide, so you can click on this to see what a portfolio um look like. Okay, and you are going to be taught how you are how you can build this from scratch, so you have something amazing as well. Okay, but really, what separates you from the competition? Because we've talked about why data analytics is lucrative. What is data analytics? Who is a data analyst? Why you should you know, become a data analyst. But what makes you different from others? Because now that, you know, we've heard about the fact that, oh, data analytics is, is you know, it's amazing, it's exciting, it's something that you want to get into because you want to end well. You want to, you want to, you want to be, you know, have good work-life balance. You want to wake up in the morning and you're not, you know, you're not going to work because, you know, you work remotely. So you just, you just do a little work out maybe do you know just jog a bit on the spot take a cup of coffee go to your workspace you know just sip coffee turn on your pc you know you have the headset you know you just you're just cruising sweet life everyone wants that okay everyone wants that so but what will now separate you that wants all of those things i mentioned from someone else that also wants those same things. What would separate you as a data analyst from others that claim to be data analysts? So you, at the end of the day, do end up getting that job and live the life, the good life, okay? What separates you? It's different things. There's so many things that separate you. And that is why over here at Analytics, we've, we've taken a look at the industry and then we notice something. We notice that it's not just about getting the tech skills. Trust me, I'm sure we know about that, our friend. So we know that friend, you know that friend. Maybe it's even a neighbor, all right? Or maybe an acquaintance, okay? And um, that the person, there was a couple of years back, they said, oh, I want to get into tech. Oh, I'm learning tech. Oh, 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 um, Ishola, today I decided to go into Excel. You know, I was just you know going through YouTube videos on Excel. It was nice. So I think I'm going to be a data analyst. Oh, Musa, I saw this. So, you know, I'm going to transition into tech. Okay. And you were like, oh, wow, good for you. Oh, good. Until now, there's no tech money for those guys. They are not in tech. They, Of course, yeah, so maybe they can use Excel in a way, but they are not working as a data analyst. They are doing something else. They were not able to fully transition into the tech space because it's one thing for you to have the skills. It's another thing for you to actually get the job. It's two different things, okay? It's not, it's not oh, as, as I just have the skills and then, you know, just like that, I'm going to get the job. All I just need is to learn. That is not the case. I know that is not the case. You know that is not the case. We all know that is not the case. So really, what separates you from others? It's what we call the order 50%. What we call the theory layered approach. All right? The order 50% is the employability skills. And the first 50% is the technical skills. Because, of course, you need the technical skills to do the job. That's a given. All right, that's a given. You need the technical skills to, I don't even need to say that. You need the technical skills to do the job. But like I mentioned earlier, that is not enough to get you the job. You need the other 50%, which is the employability skills. All right, the employability skills. So the technical skills and the employability skills. These are the two things that will get you that job, not just you knowing how to use these tools. Now, the employability skills, like I mentioned, it's what we term the TV layered approach. And what's this, what's this TV layered approach? What is it all about? All right. The TV layered approach has been carefully worked on to ensure that you get the job. 
that even as you, you know, you're not just coming here to learn the skills. You are coming here to get the job. You're registered for the program to ensure that you land that job as a data analyst. That's what the TV layered approach has been, you know, geared to do. The first is that you get to have what we call, you know, your CV review sessions. Because it's you need to, you need to, it's one thing for you to have the skills, but it's another thing for a person to know you have the skills. It's one thing for you to know how to use um power bi now but it's another thing for the recruiter to know that you can actually use power bi sometimes the recruiters don't even get to see your cv because the ats system will just say oh no you're not qualified and then move on to the next person so aside from the technical skills how do you actually ensure that your cv is amazing that when your cv looks at you will definitely be called. How do you structure the current experience you have at the moment to that of a data analyst? Cocktail, oh, so I've, I've worked in the bank for five years. Oh, I don't have, you know, experience as a data analyst. So wouldn't that be an issue when I try to, um, you know, uh, make the transition? The CV review session is there for you. It would show you how you can change that, how you can transform that's your bank experience into data analytics experience. <laughs> Mind blowing, I know. All right. But it's something that you get to learn. You get to learn how your CVs would be ATS worthy. You, how you can just, oh, you just send a CV. You already know that you're going to be called for an interview. Like you just know. You just know. The CV review sessions are meant to ensure that you know how you can practice. Um, uh, how you can properly craft your CV for each and every job that you would apply to. And then next we have the LinkedIn optimization session. LinkedIn is very, very important. LinkedIn is the Facebook of professionals. LinkedIn is the place where you have, you know, different people that, you know, do different things. You have recruiters on, on LinkedIn. You have hiring people that hire on LinkedIn. I myself have hired from LinkedIn numerous times. And when I go on LinkedIn to search for an individual, I don't search for, you know, if your LinkedIn profile is not optimized, I, I'm surely not calling on to you. All right. What? So there was a time that, um, uh, you know, I was looking to recruit an individual for, for a role and then I went on LinkedIn. So what I did is that I searched, you know, the search bar. So you just, you know, so you can say, oh, data analyst or, you know, whatever job we are searching for. You just search of, on, uh, just, you know, type in the keyword and you hit search. And then you have a list of professionals that, you know, I filled for that role. And so I got a list of professionals and then I started to can look at their profile one at a time, one at a time. I think I took a look at five or six profiles thereabout. And then those that interested me, I then reached out to them to send in their CV. So this is me reaching out to you now to send your CV for a job role you didn't even know existed. It's all because of LinkedIn. So you need to ensure that your LinkedIn profile is well crafted, that your LinkedIn profile, that you have what we call emails, you know, whatever job role that um, is suited to you, that you are notified that, oh, you need that to apply for this job, that your CV contains things that you have done, that your CV screams, oh, I can do this. Your CV screams, oh, I am a data analyst. And if you're interested in freelancing, if what you want to do is, you know, you want to go into, um, you want to go into working at your own pace, you want to decide when you walk, oh, I feel like walking today, or oh, I'm not going to walk tomorrow, or oh, I want to take five months off. Upwork is for you. Upwork is somewhat tricky. Maybe tricky is not the words to use, but for those of us that know about the Upwork platform, you know that it utilizes a currency system called what? Connect. Upwork uses a currency system called Connect. And sometimes, you know, of course, you also have to write a proposal, but sometimes it's not just about writing a proposal because you write a proposal, your proposal is fantastic, it's great. But at the end of the day, the recruiter doesn't even view your proposal. A proposal that is not viewed, how would they open out? It's not now that your proposal is bad. It's not even viewed. So how do you now get the job, even if you wrote a good proposal? Navigating through Upwork. 
and show me, you know, the needs, the greatest, the things you need to do. Should I boost? Should I not boost? Should I go ahead and spend more connect for to send a proposal? Should I not do that? What are the things I should look at for, for a job post to know those that are legit? How should I speak to a recruiter whenever I'm being interviewed on Upwork? Upwork optimization. Next, we have the navigating the job market. Because some of us, we are currently new, you know, we just, um, so we just migrated. Maybe we're in Australia at the moment, so we're in France, okay, we're in Canada, we're in the UK, okay? So we just migrated and we are confused as to how to navigate the job market. What should I do? Should I apply for a job at, in the evening or in the morning, maybe in the afternoon? Or uh, should I apply twice a month or should I apply five, five you know, five seconds in silver? How should I, what is the job market like? So you get to have a session with a professional that shows you that, oh, this is how the job, this is what the job market in, in Canada, for instance, this is what it looks like. This is what you need to do to ensure that you get the role. This is how you are going to place yourself in the midst of others to ensure that you get the role. These are the job sites that you want to look out for in this particular country. These are the job boards you want to look at for in this particular country. This is how you should apply for a vote. Oh, this is the way the CV should be crafted for this particular country. All right. So these are the things you're going to be learning in navigating the job market. And of course, now we have one, two, three, four, CV, LinkedIn, Upwork, navigating the job market. Each and every one of those things, they are meant to do one thing. One thing. What's it, what, there's something it's meant to do. What is that? They are meant to get your feet into the door. They are meant to what? Get your feet into the door. They are meant to ensure that you're that you are now halfway into the organization. That you are called for an interview. But many persons say, oh, Aisha, sir, you know, some, someone reached out to me recently and said, oh, um, Aisha, sir, please, can you mentor me? Okay, can you be my mentor? Um, I need, um, um, you know, I always, you know, my CV is not, there's no problem with my CV. I always, you know, um, I when I send them my CV, I get calls for an interview. But um, I always flop during the interview. So I've had two, I've had two interviews. I think yeah, two was what was mentioned. So I've had two interviews within the past five months. All right. And none of them, just you know that's it, it just ends in the interview stage just like we mentioned i mentioned earlier that is one thing for you to have the skills and it's another thing for you to get a job again it's one thing for your cv to be accepted and that you are called for an interview it's another thing for you to actually get the job job and interview preparation your feet is now in the door but you need to be prepared for the interview. You need to be shown what you should do and sh surely what you should not do. You need to be taught, oh, oh, this is how you should speak. And this is how you should not speak. Or oh, when you are asked questions like, oh, um, what is your salary expectation? This is what you should say. Or when you are asked questions like, um, can you tell us about yourself? A very, very popular interview question. This is how you should go about that. When you are asked about things on your CV, this is how you should you know, go about that. You get to have a one-on-one -on -one session with a professional when you have an interview. So you have an interview, you book your interview preparation session, and then you have this session with the professional, and then you get to, um, you know, uh, uh, go through what you should do and what you should not do to ensure that you do get a job. Now, you've gotten the job, but the recruiters need to know, are you who you say you are? The recruiters need to know that, oh, so um, so uh blessed said that, oh, blessed said that he built a plane, all right. So he built a plane in five days. All right, and we are excited. Blessed built built an, an airplane in five days. But I want to know, all right, is that really true? Because of course I want someone that can build a plane in five days to work with me. But is it true? So what recruiters do most of the time now is that they, you know, request for a reference letter from the organization that you worked in previously to know if you are really who you say you are, or if you're just coming in there to just blow their heads with, um, you know, with empty, uh, you know, with empty promises and, you know, claiming you've done whatever, what you've not done. 
And when you are a registered participant with us, our alumni, of course, so you know that you're going to be getting recommendation and reference letters. So now you've gotten the job, but they really want to have a confirmation as to how you, who you say you are, you know, of course, they would reach out to us and then of um um uh, we would provide the best reference. So we have nothing less than five re references every day. Every day we receive not less than five references from um, organizations that are asking, oh, this person mentioned they worked with you, they did this, they did it. Is this the case or not? Now that's for level one. Level two is you have the weekly mentorship session. The weekly mentorship session is all about you, know, you being mentored. Sometimes we apply for jobs and we apply and apply and apply. We're not getting called. You know, we're getting interviews. We're not getting the job and we feel down. Sometimes all we need is just a pat on the back to say, oh, don't, you know, don't give up. It, rejections happen to the best of us. All right. All you need to do is, you know, just continue applying and, you know, you get all of that. You, you definitely get there. Sometimes you need to just be told you got this. This is what the mentorship session is all about. In the mentorship session, you get to learn about things that, you know, how to, things that you should um apply. So let's say you've not been, um, You've not been, you've been applying for roles, but you've not been getting any suitable response. In the mentorship session, you get to learn about skills and tricks, tips and tricks that you can use to ensure that you change that story. And that you have something that you would be proud of, that you have something that you'll be able to say, wow, I'm glad that I actually did register for this program when I did. And now you've gotten a job, you've done all of that. You're now, you know, you're now in the role. You're now, you know, you're now working. But a tax was given to you that is not so clear. All right. You can reach out to us. We provide on the job support. So we do also, uh, please, you know, I can go about this and then we give you a tip. Oh, so this is what you should do. This is what you should do. And you can go back there, you know, go back to work and blow their minds, as I always say. All right. And one other thing that we promise is that we guarantee you Oh, uh, we guarantee a job interview one month after completing the training program with us. That's a guarantee to, from us to you. I promise from us to you. All you need to do is just follow all of the things we tell you to do, follow all of the instructions, and we promise you, you would get a job interview one month after completing the program with us. It's a guarantee. Okay? Now, that is what, uh, that is the other 50%. But what is the platform like? Because when you, of course, when you register, you're going to be taught a lot of things. You're going to be taught a lot of things. You're going to, um, you're going to be in the, uh, you're going to be in the Go classroom. Now, what is the Go classroom like? This is what the, I'm just going to show you what the classroom looks like. So, uh, so we can see this is data analytics. This is the, um, the recent. Uh, this was the June cohort. All right. So I'm just going to select. Uh, so let's say, uh. Okay, so let's say the May cohort, for instance. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to scroll to the bottom. So over here, you're going to see you have, uh, all right, so you're going to see you have, uh, you know, your drop-in sessions, your, you have your pub. The drop-in session is uh, a, it's a session whereby you get to uh, ask, you know, so you've gone through something during the week, but there's something that's not clear. And you just have a discussion with your facilitator on questions that you might have had during the weeks on things that, you know, oh, like general guidance. All right. But if I scroll to the bottom now, so you're going to see, of course, we begin with the onboarding material. So you have your welcome kit. Uh, it contains the um the different things that uh, you, the different tools that you would need to go through the entire program. And then over here, we have, um, um, of course, your installation videos. And then uh, you have the, you know, your problem solving class, which is your very first class. Like I mentioned earlier, you can't be a data analyst if you can't solve problems. And so let's say you miss a class. Let's say, uh, so uh, you there was an emergency or there was something that you had to do and you missed the class. No need to fret. And the reason for that is that each and every one of the sessions are recorded. So you can come over to the classroom, click on this, and then you have the recording. All right. And then you can click on that and then, you know, go through the class. And you also have the class materials. All right. So you have the class material that, you, you know, you can view. So you just click on that. Okay. So I, this is the class material. Okay. So you have, you know, what, what is data, you have uh, different things, you have pop quizzes, you know, types of data analytics. If I scroll to the bottom, you are going to see different um, 
solving uh, techniques, all right? So if you see problem solving um, techniques, you see the Crips DM framework, the root cause analysis, decision tree, the Pareto principle, prioritization matrix, all of those things are to get you to become a very, very good problem solver. Now, after you're done with that session, of course, the next session you're going to have, you're going to have, you know, your MS Excel Life Class 1. So this is the sit and start approach. This is actually from a mentorship session that you will be having during the week. And you see MS Excel Class 1, your first Excel Life Class. And you also have the recording, all right? So you have the recording of the session and also the class materials. So you can click on these, get to see the case study you'll be working on. Like I said, it is experiential learning. So you're going to be working on case studies. You're going to, you know, um, learn how you can work with all of those tools. Okay. So uh, then if then, uh, so we also have an interview simulation session. So we also have, you know, during the mentorship session, we have interview simulations whereby you get to see, you know, you um, a job post is sent out and then different persons apply. And then once you apply, some are selected, all right? So, and then you get to join in a session where you get to experience a mock interview life. So you're sitting, you're watching, oh, this is what an interview looks like, okay? You're learning, oh, these are the way questions come around and um, and all of that. So you also see you have the MS Excel classes, you have the LinkedIn optimization session, you have your body mentorship session, all right? You have your upwork optimization, your Power BI classes, you know, a lot of sessions, a lot of sessions. All right, so you see, you can request for a reference from us. So over here, you're going to see, you know what, the details that you need to uh, get a reference from us. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, so that's what the classroom, that's what the classroom looks like. All right, now, the next squad begins in July, in um, July 6th. All right, the next squad begins in July 6th. And in addition to the classroom, you are also going to, uh, be signed up to an LMS platform. So we currently have an LMS platform where you get to have a dual learning approach, a dual learning approach. So on Saturdays, you get to join a live class where you speak with the facilitator. You know, we've been speaking for a while. So you, you speak with the facilitator, you, you know, you work on projects and on learning. So like a cop one-on-one -on -one communication literally all right so you, you're in the class you get to learn you work on the case studies you get to learn to, you know the new tools new concepts just like what we are doing at the moment you get to ask questions and all of that and then on sunday you're now going to have what we call watch me do it videos which you know would be in the lms platform so don't worry about the lms so once um you register you'll be um you know you'll be an account to be created for you okay so you get to be in the lms platform and then you get to have Watch me do it videos on Sundays. These videos are bit sized videos that would introduce the concepts that you are going to learn in your next class. So you are going to be understanding. Oh, so this is what I'm going to learn in the next class. So you have a good understanding, and then you now work on case studies based on those, you know, um, um bit sized videos that you watched on Sunday during the next class on Saturday. All right. So it doesn't matter if you're a fast learner. Oh, I'm very, very fast. I can learn things, you know, just like that. Or if you're a slow learner. The, the um, program is for you because of the dual learning approach I just mentioned, the live class. And of course, you have a uh, watch me do it video. So like I mentioned, the next quarter is going to begin on the 6th of July. All right. And for you to be a part of that court, all right, this is, uh, you know, this is the commitment you would need to make. All right. And at the uh, so for the data analytics program, for you to register for the data analytics program, uh, you get to pay the full amount of you know, 900,000. That's if you're in, um, in if you're in Nigeria, that's 900,000 there. If you are in um, the, if you're in Europe, that's uh, 730 uh, uh, euros. And then if you're in the UK, 625 pounds, $750 and $1,125. So that is the payment, that is the fee for the data analytics program. All right, but we are currently running a discount, okay? So we are currently running a discount. We are always, always, and I mean always, looking for a way to give back to the community, okay? And we are currently running a discount, a 20% discount for the first 20 persons to register, just the first 20 persons to register for the program. After the first 20 persons, of course, you are going to need to pay the full amount because like I mentioned, this is the this is the um this is the payment fee so this is the discounted amount now 
if you are paying in error, you get to pay uh, 720,000 error. That's the discounted fee, having 20% off. And then if you are paying in pounds, you get to pay 500 pounds. If you are paying in dollars, you get to pay $600. If you're paying in Canadian dollars, you get to pay 900 Canadian dollars. And of course, in euros, you get to pay 580 euros. All right. So that is the discounted amount. Now, um, what about if, oh, you're looking to, you're looking to actually, uh, you're looking to actually, you know, uh, you want to register for the program, but you don't really have the full amount or the full discounted amount to pay at a single stretch. So what you can do is that you can break up the payment into two um, sections. That's why we have the first installment and the second installment. Now, for the first installment, you get to pay the first installment before you join the program. That's before july 4th because registration is going to end july 4th okay so you get to you get to um you know you get to make um uh the payment before july 4th and then that's the first payment so if you are in if you are paying naira that would be five hundred thousand naira if you are in uh, paying in pounds that would be 250 pounds okay so you get to make that first installment and then one month after the start of the program that would be the end of july you get to make the balance payment. You get to send in what? The balance payment. All right. So if you paid in there, the first installment will be 500,000. And then one month into the program, you're going to pay the balance of 220,000. That's of course, if you do qualify for the discounted amount. Okay. So uh, we really want to ensure that, you know, you're a part of the discount. And I'm going to show you what the platform uh, I'm going to show you what the payment platform looks like. So as soon as you get the slides, of course, so you can just click on this link to be taken to the payment platform where you can um, where you can go ahead to make payments. So as soon as you click on that link, it's going to take you over, um, bring you over to the enrollment center. And then over here, you can see this that says chat with Tenalytics. So if you have a question for us, you want to make inquiries, you can just click on that and you will speak with, um, you know, with a professional. And over here, we have um, our program Vultures. So we have we currently offer um, eight programs here at Analytics. So if you're interested in, oh, so what is business analysis about? Or what is data engineering about? Or what is Chrome Star about? You can click on this button and then you get to see the different virtuals for our uh, different uh, programs. And of course, we have the we have the uh, payments list, that's the price list at this particular point. Now, if you're looking to make a direct transfer, so let's say you are in Canada, for instance, or you are in the UK and you are looking to make a direct transfer, you want to pay using, you know, just send and make a direct transfer from your bank. So these are the bank details that um, you can use. So this is the bank details for, you know, Canada. And then we have, uh, um, you know, the, the uh, British bank details and of course the Nigerian bank details. So for each and for any of the uh, any of the accounts you are looking to use. So of course you can go ahead and use that. That's if you are looking to make direct transfer. But if you want to pay using, if you want to pay using your card, so you want to pay using your card, you, instead of, you know, making a direct transfer, you want to use your card, make an online payment. So you can just scroll to the bottom and then you get to select the program you're looking to register for. So let's say I want to register for data analytics. So I'll go ahead and select data analytics. And then, um, just a moment. So it's uh, this is going to load up. And then I can select the, um, you know, I can insert the price. That's what I'm looking to pay. So um, I, I'm currently in Nigeria. So I'm in Nigeria at the moment. And that is the reason why it's currently in Naira. So what, whatever you're located, if you're located in Ghana, you know, you're in, from South Africa. So you're going to see the price. You're, you're going to see the currency. All right. So the currency would be uh it will take note of the currency of your location and that would be what um you would uh be using okay so uh let's say i want to make uh let's say i want to make um you know payment for the first installment so i can just say uh 500,000 and then i go ahead and click on reserve a seat and then as soon as i click on reserve a seat i'm taking to the checkout information where i get to insert my name my email address all right I can insert, you know, my phone number. All right, so just type in some random numbers. And then I click on proceed. Okay, I click on proceed. And then, um, so as soon as I click on proceed, I'm going to get a uh, pop-ups, just a moment. 
all right so i'm going to get a pop-up that would be asking for my card details so i just go ahead and i insert my card details and then i click on pay and once i do that i'm going to get a um, i'm going to get a uh, that's you'll be getting a, a receipt sent to your mail all right you'll be getting a receipt sent to your mail and that's receipt that you get you want to come back here all right you want to come back here that's to the enrollment center and then you see where you have upload your receipt yeah upload your receipt yeah so you want to click on this link it will take you to a form where you get to upload your receipt so if you make direct transfer of course you would have a receipt so you want to you know uh, upload your receipts direct transfer online payment any of them you fill in the form and then you will get a confirmation from us followed by your you know the welcome kit things that you would need to get into the program all right and uh yeah and one other thing so one other thing you can also do for those wondering oh so um how can i ensure that i'm actually a part of the discount because at the moment i don't have the full i don't have the uh i don't have the first uh you know the first installment so i don't have the first installment but i want to be part of the discount so maybe be before the end of the month, okay, before the before July 8th, I'm going to have the full 500,000, but I want to ensure I'm part of the discount. I don't want to have to pay the full amount. What you can do is that you can make a commitment. You can make a what? A commitment. What do I mean by a commitment? You can make a payment of, let's say, so you could make a payment of, let's say, 250,000, let's say 300,000 to ensure that you key into your discount, that you are part of the first 20 persons to register for the program. So you make that payment, you key into the discount, the discount slot, you get a discount slot. And then at the end of, uh, before July 4th, before the start of the program, you want to ensure that you complete the first installment. So if you made 200,000 now, so let's say right now, as I'm speaking, you just make payment of 200,000. That's if you are paying in there, of course, um, to ensure that uh, you key into that discount. And and you of course yes um so you'll be told if you are successful all right and let's say you're successful and you're actually a beneficiary from the discount you want to ensure that you make the complete payment of the yeah, that's the remaining two hundred thousand for the complete first installment before the start of the program and of course after one um, one month after into the program you can go ahead to make the full uh to make to make payment for the second installment Okay, so uh, we also have, you know, we have numerous testimonials, like I said, uh, like I mentioned earlier, don't take my word for it, listen to what others have to say, the over 2000 plus individuals that we've helped transition, listen to them, all right, registration closes on the 4th of July, so chop chop, all right, you want to uh, get that done really, really fast, as soon as you get the slides, ensure you go through the testimonials, you know, listen to, listen to these guys, listen to what they have to say, follow us on YouTube, follow us on our different platforms, and listen to what these guys have to say. So, uh, so any question, if you have a question for me, so I'll be taking questions now, if you have a question for me, just use the raise hand icon, I would ask you to unmute, so you go ahead and ask your question. So Lucy is asking, can I make the full payments at once? Of course you can. Yes, you can. All right. So Lucy, you can go ahead and make the full payment at once. All right. So that, <clears throat> all right. So that is very, very much allowed. So it's, or you only make the breaks if you're unable to do that. All right. Fantastic. So I'll be looking forward to seeing you in class, uh, Lucy. Okay. Uh, so, so that, so, so let them, so let them, you have a question. So I'll just ask you to unmute. Please go ahead and ask your question. Okay, thank you very much for the session. Um, I'm calling from um, Canada actually. Um, I made some part payments um for the program as against um July court. So, but uh, a part payment actually. So I'm hoping to make another payment before the end of the month. So, uh, uh but I don't know what's next. But um, I'm just talked, so I want to know what's my next step so I can. At least all right get great realized. yeah fantastic so um so you made the part payment and i'm sure you qualified for the discount all right so um so you keyed into the discount and then you want to make the um 
the completion, you want to pay the completion of the first payments before uh, the start of the program. So what do you do next? Okay, so what you do next is that um, just ensure. So we just, I'm, have you uploaded, did you upload your receipts? Did you upload your receipts, uh, Suladami? Okay, uh, so did you upload your receipts? Um, not yet. Because I'm even okay. trying to see where I can download my receipt from my hub. I use RBC, so I'm trying to... All right. All right, good. So you want to ensure you get your receipt, okay? So get the receipt and then um, go back to the payment platform. You'd see upload your receipt here. Then send the receipt over to us, okay? So you fill in the form, send the receipt over to us. And of course, um, ensure you make the complete payment for the first installment before um, July 4th. And, and then you will get um you know your welcome kit and you'll be onboarded into the the program. Okay, that's fine. All right. All right then. So I look forward to seeing you, Saladavi. <laughs> Great. All right. So uh, any other question? Any other question for me? All right then. So, uh, okay. So access to the recording. So you will get access to the recording. Just ensure you fill in the form. All right. So that's the attendance form that has been sent. Um, you know, numerous times. So I'm sure my colleague would also send that again. So please just ensure you fill in the form, and you will get um, it will be sent to you. So the recording, the materials, everything that you need, uh, to follow. Okay. So uh, yeah. So that's that's the link. Okay. So that's the link. Okay. So, uh, Omolara, you're asking about what about referencing? So I'm thinking you're talking about reference letters, if you get reference letters from us and all of that. So I already I made mention of that. So I said, yes, all right, so yes. So that is something that we also offer. That's talking about the other 50%. So as long as you are a participant, that you are a registered participant or you are an alumni of Tenalytics, of course, you know that you will be getting reference and recommendation letters from us whenever it is needed, okay? So I hope I answered that. Uh, I answered your question. Great. So uh, another question. All right, guys. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining in. I'm sure we had an, an amazing time. I'm sure we enjoyed ourselves. We got to learn, you know, data analytics. It's that it's it's a nice career path. Okay, it's something that uh, I would want to go into. Please do stay safe. Ensure you uh, go through the recording, you practice, and that of course you register for the program. You really need to get that done as quickly as possible. Why? Tick, tick, says the clock. You know, tick, tick, says the clock. What you have to do, do quick. Cheers, guys.